it's okay to be wrong. And it's actually cool when you're wrong and you're like, damn, you got me. Busted. Heroin. Busted. So Heroin. funny. Yeah, that was at my finest moment, but now it's going to live on forever because we have it on the freaking podcast. Kenny, did you watch the Oscars? Parts of it, but not the entire thing. You pretend like you're not into this stuff, but I know you watched the Grammys like just last night. I did just watch the Grammys, but it was literally only for Taylor Swift. However, what I would say is that Trevor Noah was the host and he did an excellent job because it's not, it's not easy to be the host in, in that room because it could be a little bit uptight. And there's a lot of comedians that refuse to host like the Oscars, the Grammys, all, all that stuff. But um, I thought Trevor Noah did amazing. And I think that he's going to be on the circuit now. I didn't watch it. So I don't know. I don't know what it was like, but I did watch the Oscars Joe Coy. <laughs> hosting that was that was hard to watch oh really did he do a good job or a bad job i hated it personally really um i think like the consensus is that he didn't do a very good job um i know i was listening to a podcast i was listening to burt kreischer and he was like i feel for the guy he's like it's hard you don't walk it like people aren't looking to you to laugh people are looking at you yeah. because it's this like legendary really important moment so when you're cracking roast jokes it's just a hard it's a hard place to be in i know that there's a few comedians that will not do it anymore like famously kevin hart uh he was asked to host it and then someone dug up a tweet of his from years ago and then oh, the yeah. oscar went full woke and then they removed him and then a bunch of comedians were like you know what we don't because really why do you even need it if the the oscars are so are so big that they're only going to have really big names right because mm -hmm. they're not going to take a flyer on some weird comedian that no one knows but all the big comedians they don't need the oscars it's kind of like the super bowl right like i've it's been rumored that the nfl has asked taylor swift to play the super bowl but the super bowl famously doesn't pay any of the half any of the half the halftime shows so it's like why do you even need it if you're a big enough artist sure maybe your album sales go up a little bit but now that everything's streaming it's like how much how much is the super bowl really worth in terms of exposure i would assume that the oscars is the same way for comedians like you're not going to catch dave Chappelle or chris rock doing the oscars anymore it's it's not worth it the world's too sensitive and the juice isn't worth the squeeze <laughs> I love that saying so much. You know who we need to see at the Super Bowl halftime performance? I'm manifesting this for next year. Tate McRae. Tate McRae. Oh, she's been killing it. She's an amazing dancer. She's an undeniably awesome singer. And all of her music makes you want to shake your ass. Like she belongs in the halftime show so people can thoroughly enjoy themselves. You know, no offense. Know. Maybe this is like a unpopular opinion i don't care that usher is doing it i don't care oh is you know? usher they got usher for this year see and that's the perfect example of like usher needs more exposure now <laughs> he's probably like this will help my career you know yeah because he's not really relevant anymore but he had some bangers back in the day yeah 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 oh mm, such a good mm. one um speaking of uh tate have you heard this song uh-oh uh no oh it's so good i'll send i'll send it to you after this uh oh is uh that's probably my song of the month it's really good i love this era of like they they keep comparing tate to britney they're like oh my god the oh. pop star dancer era is coming back where people actually care if you got moves or not and i'm here for mm. that i love i will stay up till 3 a.m watching dancing videos on instagram <laughs> You know what? I, I will say I did kind of appreciate TikTok a little bit more during the pandemic when TikTok was focused around dance and like singing, but now it's all types of content. And then Molly, our wonderful producer, sent us something today that was saying that the TikTok algorithm is going to start to promote longer videos of over one minute and that the when the video is shot in landscape mode, 
that they're going to start to promote those videos, which is actually great for the pod because we post a lot of our stuff on LinkedIn. If you don't follow us, please do. Mm -hmm. And so I would love if we got a little bit more reach in landscape mode on TikTok. That would be nice. That's why they did it. They did it for us. Oh, they heard that our 300 subscribe, well, actually 460 Yeah, don't subscribers. dog us like that. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, we got some subscribers now. What's <laughs> up? Thank you for all the people that listen. We really just do the show for our, gran for our grandparents. That's said <laughs> not to offend anyone. But if you know me or Connor, specifically me, there is no one that I love more on this earth than my grandmother. And so even if she was the only Same. listener, I would still force Connor to do the pod every week anything for nanny and grandma anything connie listens pretty nanny. religiously too so we got some pretty that's loyal so grandmas that's um, so sweet we always talk about our we always end up talking about our grandmas <laughs> we're still working on grandma's tequila we talked about a few episodes ago don't worry it's it's on the back burner but it's there <laughs> yeah connor and i are actually taking a trip to mexico um she actually just uh, purchase a sombrero and a new dress uh for our trip to mexico so we can go pick uh, pick some of the supply that's going to go into grandma's tequila. <laughs> Olé! <laughs> Wait, I want to go back to the Oscars really quickly before we start talking about this insane bonus package that Elon Musk just got. So interesting. Um, for the Oscars, there is this video going around of Ryan Gosling just going like this. Have you seen it? No. <laughs> so it's because... So Ryan Gosling aka ken we all know him he got nominated for an oscar and uh people were upset that he won like best what did he win for just ken he won something and mm. greta the director she didn't get nominated for anything margot didn't get nominated uh, america Ferrera didn't get nominated so the video is kind of funny because you can tell that ryan gosling's like uncomfortable by his his win he's like oh shit like i know this did he gonna... win i think so or did he just get nominated he won best supporting actor oh my god that is so bad because he was going up against so it was ryan gosling for barbie sterling k brown for american fiction robert downey jr for oppenheimer robert de niro for killers of the flower moon and mark ruffalo for poor things so all of those other movies are very intense i saw poor things yesterday it was <laughs> it was unhinged <laughs> it's a crazy movie but oppenheimer american fiction killers of the flower moon these are like very intense and serious movies so the f i just uh, i gotta show you the video of his face that's going viral he's like almost a little embarrassed you can tell by the fact that wait he a won. second hold on hold on the oscars is on february 12th you're talking about the golden globes correct <sighs> Oh my God, everybody, it's so embarrassing of me. <laughs> and she's an actress who's worked in film since she's eight years old. And she's like, yeah, we're filming this today on February 5th. And sh you keep talking about the Oscars. And I'm like, wait oh, a second, no. I haven't seen anything. We got to redo the whole we're intro. We're not doing it. No, no everyone just is just a blonde moment. We're talking about the Golden Globes. I don't have those. Come on. What? Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. I don't have my ish together. I didn't watch the Grammys because I, number one, don't care, but I, number two, definitely didn't know the Oscars. Who knows? I don't care. And then the Golden Globes was the one that I watched out of all of it. What? Well, the Oscars hasn't even, it hasn't even come up yet. It actually comes up next month, according to chat GPT. Hysterical. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, very interesting stuff. Um, Ryan Gosling's a little, he's a little disappointed, which is a weird place to be in. You should be so proud of yourself for working so hard. Okay, let's just clarify really quick. So the article that I that I read says Gosling earned an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. He did, yeah. But so he got nominated and Margot did not. So um, here, so here is the question: Did Margot Robbie get snubbed? Yes or no? Yeah. If anybody in that movie was going to win anything, it should have been America Ferrera or Margot Robbie or Greta, okay. obviously, the director. Like that, that movie, you can't compare it to anything. 
The only thing I can compare it to, which also should have won a million awards. Did you ever? You probably didn't because you're a boy. Did you watch that movie Life Size with Tyra Banks back in the day? No. Okay, well, it's about her. She was a Barbie and she became a real girl. And that is the Mm. only even slightly relevant thing to compare Barbie to. Like the thing about it is it's so it's so its own thing. It's so unique. So, yeah, it's. It's disappointing. Um, I feel like we live in a pretty like give women their flowers kind of world. So definitely surprising that we're not we're paying the most attention to Ken since when. Okay. So so it's your take that this is some kind of like sexist move by whoever picks the Oscars, was it like the Hollywood Foreign Press that they didn't they didn't nominate the female director or the female star. Instead, they nominated the male supporting actor. Is that kind of the 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 genesis here? Yeah, that's my rub. Okay. So let me offer the other side of the coin. Ugh. Margot Robbie did not lose out to other men. She lost out to other women in the category. So it's not like that she was replaced by three male actors. She just wasn't good enough in her performance to be with, to be in the same class with those ladies who, who got the nod, right? So when I heard that it was sexist, I was like, okay, I get that it's a movie, but she didn't lose out to another guy. She lost out to all of her actress peers. Is that the wrong way to look at it? Kenny, will you stop? It's messed up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say. So my reaction is that Kenny just... It, that's what girls do. You're being ridiculous. There's enough. Now, if the female director lost out to other men and there were only men in the category, then I could see, okay, maybe that's a snub. But for Margot specifically, she didn't lose out to other guys. She lost out to other female actresses. So what, those actresses should be, she should take one of their spots if her performance wasn't as good? That's what That's what I didn't understand. And I know that the easy knee-jerk reaction thing to do in today's age is just to agree with whatever the consensus is. But when I saw this, I was like, wait, they have female actor and female actress. It's not like she was losing to dudes. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it backwards. No, I don't think you are. I just think think it's bizarre that out of Everybody who's important in that movie, he's getting the accolades. It's a little funky. But did you see how good of shape that he, like, he should have won something for, like, I mean, I thought that he was, like, CGI'd how ripped that he got. And he's in his 40s. I was like, God bless that dude. I mean, he got jacked out of his mind. Yeah, he looked, Grandma, he looked good. <laughs> that's all, that's all <laughs> Grandma, I'll say. <laughs> that's all we're going to say. We're keeping this show PG-13. Something really insane happened last week that I didn't even know. I didn't even know this amount of money was allowed to be given to one person. So a judge last Tuesday invalidated Elon Musk's record 56 billion pay package, 56 B billion Mm. from Tesla, which was approved by the company shareholders in 2018. So this is by far the largest corporate compensation agreement basically in history and it's just really insane what ended up happening do you do you know anything about this or am i just like dropping news no so i've been following this because i saw elon go kind of crazy on twitter and then other he people, does. <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> he probably needs this money because he spent so much money on Twitter. He needs to get paid back. Right. Um, so I've been following this on Twitter or X. I'm still getting used to it. And it definitely is crazy. It's a lot of money. Now it is in stock, right? So it does dilute the, the shareholders, the existing shareholders a little bit. And in theory gives Elon a little bit more control, but I was looking into this and I was like, okay, is this is this amount of money too much? Right. And because it does seem like a lot. And yeah, it's hard to make the argument that it is that it's not too much. So what I did is I looked at the top 10 highest paid CEOs of 2022. And uh that list is crazy. So just some notable ones. This is in no particular order, but Tim Cook made 99 
million dollars in total comp in 2022. And then um, one of the more interesting ones in total comp in 2022, Elon Musk made $122 million. That's about what? Half a million dollars a day, right? That's a lot of money. Wait, let me and stop then, you really right there. Is this yearly? This is just their compensation for the year, for the calendar year 2022. The one that was the biggest, the two biggest head scratchers to me were Robert Scanridge of Rivian Automotive made $823 million in total comp. And the CEO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rollison, made $575 million in total compensation. Between the two of those companies, I don't even think that they sold 50,000 cars. Yeah. Is Lucid the one that we saw in Miami where the door- Lucid like, was the one up? that we that you sat in and we did a little video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're nice, cool they're, nice, they're nice cars, but these people, I mean, the two of them combined made over $1 billion worth of total comp. And their companies don't even turn a profit. They don't even really make cars at scale, which goes to prove kind of like how rigged that the whole system is, is that these, com these companies go public, the executive teams have a bunch of stock, and they cash out for hundreds of millions of dollars, and they don't really deliver on their, on their promise, right? Like Rivian is still not making cars at scale. And I saw the other day, uh, according to a report that came out, the Rivian pickup truck uh, was voted one of the top 10 least reliable cars in America. Also, interesting enough, uh, Jeeps took three of the top 10 spots, which really broke my heart because I've been looking at a Jeep Grand Cherokee like crazy. And then basically it's one of the least reliable cars in America, which is sad. Sad. You didn't know sad. that? Oh, yeah. My cousin you knew that? like loves Jeeps and always had them his whole life. He's rolled like four different Jeeps. <laughs> yeah. They I are mean, not crazy. safe cars. They have high resale value though. <laughs> yeah, they do. And do you know what car also ranked in the bottom 10 cars of reliability? Mm -hmm. Volkswagen Jetta. Mm -hmm. Oh, no! I hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see it. That's I hate so to see sad. it. But the Elon Musk thing is really notable and it's very interesting. I think what's actually going to happen is there's going to be a bunch of companies that uh, relocate from Delaware because I think between like 40% or 60% of all publicly traded companies are actually registered in Delaware. This is a big source of tax revenue for Delaware. Mm. And I think that those companies are going to pull out because Delaware got to be this way because they had very friendly and clear business rules and business laws. And the fact that this was such an anti-business judgment, uh, I think that it's going to have major repercussions. And Tesla is going to try to move to Texas. And I saw Kathy Wood, um, who runs a very large hedge fund, she is also thinking about moving as well. And so once it happens to Elon and he's going to pave the way for, I think, others to follow in his footsteps. So this decision will li will likely mean that Delaware loses millions of dollars. Hmm. I love that that's all it took to put one of the most powerful men in America in his place. It was just like a, a judge in Delaware who just said, you know, this is an unfathomable sum and it's unfair to shareholders. And it's like, that's all it took for this to not go through. And then they asked him if he had a comment on the situation. Elon was like, no comment. Then just goes on X and tweets, never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware. And that's all he said about it. I kind of loved that. I thought that was such a cool move. Actions have consequences, right? So if you're going to mess with the most powerful person, one of the most powerful, richest people in the world, who's also kind of a bandit, I mean, you can't think he's just going to take it laying down. Like I always think, and I know this is fictitious, but at least you watch the show so we can have this conversation now. Whenever I, I see things done to people who run big businesses and they're well and they're wealthy, I, in my mind, I think, what would Bobby Axelrod do? Right? <laughs> What would Bobby freaking Axelrod do if this happened to him?
What Tesla do you think? is his Wendy. <laughs> He'd do anything. Um, if anybody cares, we should do a Billions episode where we basically just talk about the show Billions like it's like we're doing a book club. <laughs> oh, I would do that episode for three, four hours. I mean, there is nothing. I just love that show. The only thing that I didn't like is when Axelrod left the show for like a season or two. I understand why he did because he just got burnt out and his wife died. So like, okay, I mean, you just so went through sad. it, right? Yeah. So it it was good to see him come come back and be the heroine of the show because Michael Prince just wasn't it for me. You but wanted yeah, him to if, come back and be the heroine? I wanted I wanted Axe to be back in the show. It wasn't the same without. Yeah, but isn't heroin like a girl version of a hero? No, heroin is like the main character. It's not the girl. It's not the girl version. Are you sure? Look it up. Heroin, a woman <laughs> idealized for her courage. <laughs> Hero- <laughs> is that right? <laughs> heroin, oh. a woman of superhero qualities. Heroin, the chief female character in a book, play, or movie. <laughs> Oh shit! I was totally wrong. I will eat my words. Wrong. Oh That's my the god! Wrong use we of the got word. it on camera. Oh, wrong. this is. I know. I just. I don't like this. Yeah, that's actually. That's my bad. I. I did screw that up. There's actually nothing. He's the hero. There's nothing better when you are incorrect. Not just you, but anybody. You're wrong. I'm the queen of this, and somebody's like, "No, what you just said is actually wrong," and then you just stand by it, even if it's brutally not the truth but the pro move is for everyone that's wrong the cool move is just admitting you're wrong and being humble it's it is weird when people are wrong and then they get butt hurt it's okay to be wrong and it's actually cool when you're wrong and you're like damn you got me busted heroin busted so heroin. Funny. yeah that wasn't my finest moment but now it's gonna live on forever because we have it on the freaking podcast yes it will oh this just in Producer Molly weighs in. America Ferreira earns Oscar nomination for Barbie after Golden Globes snub. So the Oscars didn't want any of that noise. And they're like, you know what? She's Latina. She did a good job. Let's actually give her the nod. And so they put her in. And she did do a really good job. And I haven't watched enough movies this year to compare. And honestly, because I'm not in film, I never really know who did good in a movie or what I know when someone's bad, but it's really hard to say like, wow, they were really exceptional in that movie. And then when people are exceptional, like I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was exceptional in Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, it was a crazy movie. Best Scorsese movie. was was awesome. And I thought I thought Leo was amazing. And then he didn't even get nominated. And I'm like, okay, so if if that's not a good job. I mean, when he's on the Quaaludes and he's crawling to the Ferrari, and there's so many times where you're just like, wow, like this guy is Jordan Belfort. I didn't even see Leonardo DiCaprio and he got snubbed. So I have no idea how these things even come about because it is a mystery to me. I mean, maybe you can tell as a trained actress, can you tell when someone gives an Oscar worthy performance? I'd say no. I mean, the thing is, is that the things that get nominated are not necessarily what you'd think. So like the reason I originally went to film school was because I kind of thought I was like, do I want to be a movie critic? Do I want to be a director of cinematography? I took one movie critic class and kind of figured out like what the elements are that they look for. Mm. But I still don't think that any of those are really applicable. So they do plot. Um plot theme acting dialogue score like the soundtrack editing um a couple other random cinematography mm, and then they do they call it something like the it factor so it's just like this one of a kind thing about oh. the movie but yeah, yeah. what i have to say is is that all the movies i love never get nominated like it's kind of sad that we can't just take things that we genuinely just enjoy and we have to make all these like accolades that these movies get, we have to make it so deep. Like once upon a time in Hollywood, it's a good movie, but I'd rather watch Barbie. You know, it's kind of what Mm. the, what, what am I watching here? So I just don't like that. It always has to be this like deep and confusing thing. I don't know. I love that we came full circle and America Ferreira was nominated 
for the Oscars, and then we found out it was the Golden Globes. What a win. She's just, I mean, I'm like sisterhood of the traveling pants era, so I naturally love her with my whole heart. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you, there was one performance that I saw that I was like, this is the best performance I've ever seen in movie history. And I don't know if she got the nod, but Rooney Mara in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. <gasps> yes. Every time she came movie. on the screen, she was striking. Her transformation was insane. Like it was an insane movie. And she did so amazing. And did she win for that or no? Probably not. So she was nominated for Best Actress, but she didn't win. Okay. But at least she was nominated. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like she won anything, but she was nominated. At least she got nominated because she was incredible. Um, and so that was one where I saw it. I was like, every time that she's on the screen, I cannot take my eyes off of her. I'm like glued to it. So similar to how Sydney Sweeney is, who should also um, have many Oscars under her belt. Um, but yeah, she no. just did so good. Wait, you're saying no to Sydney? Are no. you serious? She's not Oscar worthy. Sorry. What? Okay. Um, let's watch something a little unhinged really quick. Are you ready? Yeah, go for it. I think you're going to love this. Hashtag taken! I'm not afraid to take a stand! Everybody! incredible and what a song choice too right this meltdown song has to be one of the best things let me ask you two questions Everybody, come to come my to hand. i hope that artist that made that song is like <laughs> watching that's eminem oh that's an eminem song that's why that's why he's like who wants a little detroit or whatever he says about <laughs> detroit i mean eminem probably watched this and was like dude this is not what i was saying like why are you like this but um let me ask you this uh if if you are in that waiting room or that waiting area room and they let that guy on the plane for some reason are you getting on the plane with him absolutely not that man will just open the emergency exit and jump out while singing Superman by Eminem. <laughs> I do not trust this man. Um, All right. I so you're like, not getting on the plane. No, I think there's something so interesting about an airport meltdown because you mm. know that you're under like government surveillance. First of all, it's like being in a bank and start screaming about your money problems. Like it's just a really weird choice to show how, uh, unhinged is the only word I can think of. You are before you hop on a flight. Like no one wants to fly with you. First of all, there's no way that man would be allowed to fly. Right. I hope you would think so. They ha they can't let that guy on. <laughs> Can you imagine? You walk on your seat, you, you like walk on the plane to your seat, you know you're sitting in like 12A, and then you look up and you're just like, uh, this is the guy I'm sitting next to. He got <laughs> on? <laughs> and like, if he starts singing on the plane, do you start like humming along or do you drop a beat and encourage him? Like, do you make friends with him or do you kind of like turn away? What What's your play if that guy starts doing crazy stuff and you're sitting next to him? I'd probably just try to like sing other Eminem songs. So you're like, like, oh, that him. song's not his best work. And then you're like, what about this one? Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, exactly. 
What would be your airport meltdown song that you would scream Ooh. if you were having a conniption? All right. You know what? I think I'm in my Taylor Swift era. So I think I'm going style by Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. We never go out of style. We never go out of I can't sing, so I'm not gonna embarrass myself. But yeah, style by Taylor Swift. You're That's just a sobbing. You're like, hey, you got the <laughs> <laughs> look in <at> your eye. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what? Circling back the reprise, I would actually be kind of interested after I got done with style if if they gave me the grace of doing a follow-on song. I think I would go, I think I would go either Run for the Hills by Tate McRae or I would go Uh oh by Tate McRae. <laughs> You're making such, <laughs> such weird girly bops. I can't. Oh, yeah. No, okay, fine. If I had to pick a manly, cool one, um, the one that I heard on the whatever the show was last night, was it the Grammys? The Jay Z song. Um, oh, I'm forgetting what it is. There's a Jay Z song that's just so sick. I think I would go with that one, but you know what? I don't know the words like I do. You know what? I would actually do the DMX <laughs> song, the DMX song I sent you the other day. Oh, that's a good one. You are picking yeah. obscure songs, though. Well, I mean, I want everyone to dial in and Tate McRae, like you're trying to get everyone like. <laughs> at the gate to just start twerking and like grinding on each other. Oh my like, God. Could you imagine? I, I start singing and there's like a 65 year old <laughs> grandmother and she's just like backing it up like a little bit. It's too much. Um, we should try this next time we're at the airport and just see what happens. See what happens. I'll be back up. If you can take the lead vocals, um, I should not be singing in public in any respect. I have no vocal ability at all. So if you want to take lead, I'll surely back you up. I have two songs that I would pick from either uh, what's up by the four non blondes. Cause it's like one of my favorites and I've, I've cried and I've cried, screamed it before, you know, it's song and I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath, which would be and such a weird plot twist for everybody. Or I would do that song uh, smells like teen spirit by Nirvana, which would probably be along the same lines of what this man is giving. You know that song? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're saying Here that we you would now entertain <laughs> us? Yeah. <laughs> are you <laughs> telling me that one. you would not go with "Nonsense" by Sabrina Carpenter? <laughs> 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 so crazy! I just that would be even funnier. Instead of freaking out, he just starts singing like really loud and afraid, like a really soft Nora Jones song. I like the idea of it, but I just can't picture it. All right. What if someone started singing something a little bit edgy and they started singing In the Morning by Abel Hart? And you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> even weirder. He's just trying to like, <laughs> everybody's like, uh, people he... just start making out. It's <laughs> yeah. just like, oh. <laughs> oh the point was actually not to like freak people out but it was just to get them in the mood <laughs> yeah be like listen we got six hours on this flight to seattle we're gonna sing a little able heart no. to set the mood <laughs> that'd be such a funny airport freak out well oh if we God. ever catch one in our escapades over the next few months of being at the airport we promise no matter what first reaction whip out the phone for the nerds that for would be, <laughs> be so funny um okay airport freakouts elon musk is still rich and ryan gosling that's that's what we covered today and i don't that's know the difference covered. between the golden globes the oscars the grammys the tonys are there more am i missing anything yeah i don't know uh, that seems like like an exhaustive list. it's yeah. too many Maybe. honestly too many. um all right well have a good night what are you having for dinner um, oh, I'm going to go a no carb dinner for tonight. Whoa. Um, I'm just going to, I do this probably like once or twice a week where I have zero carbs for dinner and I um, think I'm going chicken and broccoli straight up like ew. a, like a fiend. I know. Ew. But listen, we're going to be eating tons of bad food. Um, we're going to a bunch of places over the course of the next month. So I feel like I got to kind of tighten up to give the belt a little bit of extra room.
You know Should I be doing that? I literally have a coupon right now. I'm going to this place by my house and getting a barbecue Hawaiian pizza on my way home. So, um, oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> so, will you share or no? Can you bring some in the morning? Straight carbs. Honestly, cold Can... pizza. Mm. Oh, pizza in the morning. So good. Fuck. In the morning pizza, like a little morning pizza laying in bed in a hotel room. Oh. Because that's so the only good. time you can have pizza is when you're alone traveling. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. Um, I've had pizza with Kate. Shout out to Kate multiple times on the pod. Me and Kate had pizza uh, last Tuesday. That was nice. <laughs> All right. Well, um, enjoy you your carbless dinner. It will make you sad while you're eating it. And I just want you to remember me saying that when you're yeah, crying into it your broccoli. But in Singapore or Switzerland, it's going to look all right. It'll look all right. But we won't <laughs> when we get back because we'll be fat as hell. <laughs> when we get back, yeah. As I'm in Singapore and, Swi and Switzerland, fantastic. When I'm back, I'll be unrecognizable, almost like fat, like fat bastard in that movie. <laughs> Just, you'll be like, oh, wow. Uh, his travels have not been kind to him. Well, if anybody has any um, low-carb recipes, send them Kenny's way. Okay. <laughs> Low carb, no carb, girl. Come on. No carb. Might be. All right. Later, nerds. <laughs>